Hello, I'm Rebecca Russo, and I'm going to talk to you about my experiences during the SURE program. The project I worked on was microsphere production and cracking. The reason I worked with microspheres is they can be used as biological microcarriers, drug delivery tools, and in microelectronics. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is what I've done on a day-to-day -day basis and the processes I've learned over the summer. The first thing I do is I make the devices to produce the microspheres. I pour PDMS into a mold that has the pattern of the nano channels on it. I then cut, cut the PDMS out of the channel, out of the mold, and attach it onto a piece of glass. I then attach tubing. The next thing I do is I fill the tubing with water and put a couple drops of ink into the center tube. I then put PDMS into the middle syringe and the PDMS is what will actually form into the spheres. I then attach the syringes to syringe pumps and this allows me to adjust the flow rate of each of the syringes. Uh, the, the size of the spheres is determined by the flow rates that I designate. This is a, this, <laughs> these are two pictures and a uh, diagram of the flow rates in the micro channels. The center, uh, or the top photo is of the center tube with the PDMS first coming through. The bottom picture is where the sphere is about to detach itself from the rest of the PDMS. These are images of the microspheres. Um, these microspheres are about 120 micrometers in size, but we can make them between 80 and 140 micrometers. Before I crack the spheres, I first have to cure them in a, in a 60 degree oven for 24 hours. This allows, this lets us make sure that the spheres won't turn back into a liquid. I then deposit them on a glass slide and let all of, let all of the water dry. Right before I crack the spheres, I have to oxidize them, and this forms an, a hard outer shell on the spheres. I then put spacers on either sides of the sample and compress them with a heavy weight. The spheres are compressed between 20 and 40 percent, and the spacers allow us to control this compression ratio. One thing that we do is deposit gold on the cracks of the spheres. To do this, we crack the spheres in a solution of water and gold nanoparticles. We then allow the water to evaporate and the gold nanoparticles get stuck in the cracks. After this, we wash the spheres and we image them with a dark field microscope. What I've been working on this summer is what is the best temperature for the evaporation to take place and what's the best concentration of gold so that we can really know what's the best process use. What I've gained from the SURE program is that I've become familiar with many different microscopes. I've gotten the experience of doing research full-time and being part of a research team. I've also made connections with many professors, graduate students, and undergraduate students at the university. I'd like to thank the SURE program, Professor Thales, who's been my advisor, Professor Takayama, whose lab I've used, Professor Kotov, whose dark field microscope I've used. I'd also like to thank Jason, who's been my mentor throughout the summer, and all of the members of the Takayama Lab Group for everything they've helped me with. Thank you.